Welcome to the By Design Radio Program. My name is Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare and PrudianHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity. And as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to help educate you and your families to feel better, function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible. Thanks for joining me this week as we are about to conclude a 10-part series on pain. Yes, today will be the last uh part of the 10 part series and um i've been getting some really good feedback from you guys as we've taken the subject matter apart and i'm excited to get into today's show to wrap up a lot of sort of, sort of loose ends so you have direction and um i find myself recording this show this week during uh the week of easter resurrection sunday is just a few days away or as you listen to my show it's actually tomorrow um and i just wanted to take a minute um not sure about you guys but every year around this time maybe three or four days before easter i sort of get into a somber mood it's uh it's sort of a a a mood of understanding um or having the understanding of of what actually took place this week um good friday and on um, easter sunday or resurrection sunday and i guess the the older i get and as the years pass um, of being a Christian, I can't help but to to feel um, a, a little bit different each each year. And one of the things that dawned on me as I was um, getting prepared for today's show, as I was um, sort of thoughtfully in prayer and wanted to choose my words uh, the best that I can this week, was the fact that I'm recording here these shows ten part. I did not know how many parts I was going to do, and as I conclude on a ten part, it's actually Easter week, and it dawned on me, you know, after learning about crucifixion, what and how much pain the human body suffered, and how much Jesus suffered on the cross. And, you know, this, again, makes you a little bit, I can't help it, but it makes me a little bit somber, makes me feel that to know that uh, Jesus, what he did in with respect to how much God loves us, and uh, you can't help but as a Christian to somehow feel that. And I guess as each year passes and I get a little bit hopefully wiser in my walk as a Christian and I pray for wisdom and humility, that you know, all of us kind of maybe take a a moment here and and sort of as we go through this week, understand that pain is part of our life. And and we know that and we've illustrated that. But the fact that um, everything is in his hands and let God determine our outcome, meaning that he has us and we know he has us. And um, if there's anything that I always want to reiterate in this show is healthcare is ultimately in God's hands, but we are here to be as a steward and to understand that he gave us this miracle of life. And I feel very passionate about each one of us doing the best we can to preserve and to maintain this physical being while we're here. So um, happy Easter to everyone. And may we all just take this time to really reflect on on his coming and his resurrection. And um, as I record this show each week, uh, knowing that, you know, I got a lot of brothers and sisters out there listening to me, uh, make no mistake that, you know, our health care is something that uh, as much as I could talk, uh, I'm just I'm just a guy behind a microphone giving this hopefully some tidbits. But this amazing miracle of life is ultimately his. So let's get back into pain. Uh, we got, you know, some time here. And, and let's start with um, this morning. I, I did a Bible study for my for my children as we do as we breakfast every morning. And the name of the Bible study uh, out of a, a daily devotion was called Failed and Failed Again. And uh, it was all about how uh, Peter, uh, you know, failed Jesus, but came, literally was jumped out of a boat, swam to, to, to see him um, after his resurrection. And uh, it was all about as we fail, you know, there's a loving God there with his arms open, welcoming us and having breakfast with us as Jesus did with Peter. You know, failed and failed again is such an illustration of yo-yo dieting, you know, patients who diet, for instance, and then they go on and off and on and off. And I've been talking to you about this wellness lifestyle, which, you know, there is no on and off. There is just staying on. And there are times where you have some fun and celebrations and Easter is a celebration and I'm going to have a lot of fun on Sunday with my family. Uh, But it's basically knowing to get back into the wellness lifestyle and not leaving it. And failed and failed again 
so many times pertains to pain, meaning that we have pain in our life, we take a few pills, we feel a little better, we forget about it, but it never really goes away. So today we want to address chronic pain. Chronic pain is, you know, uh, and I'll read you some, uh, some uh, bullet points here as we get going, that, you know, many people with chronic pain are just, you know, terrified that if they move, right, it'll damage something further. But you know, nothing could really be further from the truth. I was doing a little research and I'm a certified chiropractic sports physician. I'm also a certified strength and conditioning specialist. So exercise is a major part of my practice. It's a major part of my life that as we're doing rehabilitation and reconditioning programs with our patients, we want to um, uh, get them into an exercise rehabilitation program as soon as we can. But chronic pain is this thing that's lingering. So if you look at chronic pain as being, yes, I'm going to say something, the biggest health problem in the United States. States. So the biggest health problem, all right, it is defined as pain that is lasting more than three to six months. It affects a hundred million adult Americans. And when you look at the fact that 40%, greater than 40% of the adult population has chronic pain, you can understand that this is the leading reason why people go to doctors. And it costs the nation over $600 billion a year. That's billion with a B. Now, $635 billion a year is more than cancer, heart disease, and diabetes combined. So as much as you've heard me talk about cancer, heart disease, and diabetes throughout the By Design radio programs, we know that with Luke 137, for with God, nothing is impossible. We now, now let's start connecting the dots with the fact that we have chronic pain being the number or the, the leading cause of health problems that Americans have. Greater than 40% of the uh, adult population have it. And the and that's the reason why the leading reason why they go to doctors. It costs over six hundred and thirty five billion dollars a year, which is more than cancer, heart disease, and diabetes combined. So the prevalence of chronic pain, okay, is just astounding, and the number of non narcotic treatments is really remarkable. What that means is. As I shared with you a few weeks ago, you know, surgery and go home and do nothing but take medication are not the only two options for chronic pain. You know, far from it. <laughs> we have to look at the fact that there's many, many, many vehicles of treating chronic pain outside of just surgery and medication. Surgery and medication are absolutely very useful, very needed tools in the management and treatment of chronic pain chronic pain, but we have to understand and take into effect that exercise is so key to treating chronic pain, okay? It is such a key because if you feel that motion is not a very key component in the treatment of chronic pain, you're just wrong. Now, chronic pain, remember guys, is different than acute pain. Acute pain is if I took a hammer and I banged it on my wrist. No, exercise and movement is not the appropriate appropriate treatment for swelling and inflammation because I just had acute trauma. We're talking about chronic pain, pain that's not going away, it's lingering, it's, it's lasting greater than, like I said, three to six months. And exercise is pretty close to being part of the magic bullet for pain. Even aggressive exercise, but like I blogged uh, a week or so ago, exercise should be something that you think of as a prescription. Exercise should be prescribed by the type of a person that understands the right type of exercise for your specific chronic pain. So for instance, you have chronic pain that's due to a myalgia or muscle pain or degenerative disc syndrome, or let's say spondylolisthesis. These are conditions that could produce chronic pain. There are exercise programs specific for those types of conditions. So we want to understand 
that chronic pain is a primary, not a secondary, cause of why we go to our doctors. We have an escalating healthcare cost in our country. So much of it is linked to this chronic pain. And exercise is powerful and a wonderful way to prevent chronic pain. Among, again, the young, the middle-aged, even the old. I know in practice, even if I have an 85, 90-year-old person and we do some massage therapy for them, we release the muscle, we do a little bit of decompression technique for the lower back, which is a very gentle form of disc therapy. We then want to make sure that at home or with our physical therapist or with one of the personal trainers here, that they're doing a very specific exercise program to help encourage that muscle to be facilitated, to help encourage the joint to be or give it motion. Last week, I covered what muscle and joint and ligament and disc and tendon were. Now we want to go use these structures and we're driving down the incidence of chronic pain. Even things like acupuncture, massage therapy, chiropractic, these are all wonderful, non-invasive, non-narcotic ways of treating chronic pain. So in my field, we talk about, right, well, not in my field, but in my Bible study this morning, me and the kids were talking about failed and failed again. So if you're one of those people that have chronic pain and you fail and fail again at, let's say, you go to a chiropractor for two weeks or four weeks, or you go to a physical therapist for four weeks, or then you go over here and you, you go to the gym and it hurts too much, so you stop going. All right, let's just all stop and realize that chronic pain, which is kind of dull, achy pain, we have to break the pain cycle. So write that down in your health journal. We wanna break the pain cycle, not by doing, like I said in the wellness lifestyle, a once in a while activity. We do not wanna make this a once in a while activity. The wellness lifestyle is about living a certain way every day of our lives, Yes, to glorify God, and secondly, to follow his physical, his psychological, and his nutritional plan for our life. So we want to engage our bodies to break this pain cycle into a physical medicine program. Physical medicine requires a quarterback. Now, in, in my patients' lives, I'm their quarterback. And what I do is I outline very specific types of therapies. This one therapy, let's say it's passive therapy, might take place for the first four weeks. Then we engage them in active therapy for the next eight weeks. But we have an ongoing plan for them to break the pain cycle, not to cause injury, which is the primary thing in, a, in when I see some of these exercise plans designed out there, they actually create injury. And this physical medicine rehabilitation, reconditioning program, let's say it again, physical medicine, rehabilitation, reconditioning program is designed to drive down pain, increase range of motion, increase muscle mass, and decrease the amount of times that your heart beats per minute because we want to get your resting heart rate lower. The less your heart beats per minute, okay, the better shape that you're in. So we want good lung capacity, the way we breathe. We want less pain, and we have to have a quarterback in our life. Now, a show or two ago, I shared with you, you need to be a healthcare consumer. You need to shop for the right type of doctors in your life. So just like we shop for a plumber or electrician, let's get out there. We, we're not looking for Band-Aid treatment, a pill for every ill, stick four weeks of chiropractic or two weeks of physical therapy on and then discharge. We're living a wellness lifestyle. We do not want Band-Aid treatment. We must have people in our lives just like I have the emergency doctors, I call them the God forbid doctors. Let's say I need an emergency doctor, a neurosurgeon for brain trauma, or a plastic surgeon because someone in my family had, you know, an accident. We should know who those doctors are in our lives. Well, I look at what I do for a living, similar but not as uh, not in, a, in an acute situation, but for chronic pain, pain that's not going away. What are the things that we're doing every 
day for chronic pain. And hopefully these 10 shows has shared with you what silent inflammation is, what autoimmune is, and autoimmune pain, and how we have to be responsible, you and I, in our wellness lifestyle, to surround ourselves with the right type of therapists and doctors and clinicians so that we could break this pain cycle. First, knowing where the pain is coming from. Is it nerve? Is it muscle? Is it disc? Is it joint? That's not your job. You need someone to figure that out for you and then to engage our body so we don't do what I talked about today in the Bible study, failed and failed again. We want to develop a wellness lifestyle so that we break this pain cycle, reduce the amount of pain in our bodies, and start living a painless, not pain-free, but a painless lifestyle. And I really do pray for all of you as we close our 10th show on pain and as we celebrate Easter Resurrection Sunday with our friends and families. I pray for all of you that you have wonderful weekends and we all reflect upon His glory, His mission, His health, and the fact that He's given us this miracle of life for us to maintain to try to prevent chronic illness, and to try to preserve so that we could glorify Him. Thank you so much for listening to the By Design Radio Program and me, Dr. James Prudian. If you need any information about me, please go to prudianhealthcare.com. Um, And thank you to The Bridge and Tandem Radio for allowing me to share this week. I do pray that everyone listening to me take some of these things into account. We start reducing some of the pain in our lives. And I look forward to um, uh, talking to you next Saturday. And have a wonderful week and a blessed Easter. Thank you.